so the second talk will be uh, about other uh, autoimmune diseases different than uh, pemphigus uh, foliaceous and uh, here what I would like to talk about is uh, diseases of basement membrane zone so all the subepidermal blistering skin diseases and what I would like to look at it uh, is from the clinical aspect and whether or not we can tell them apart and how can we tell them apart I would like to uh, show you some of the new entities in cutaneous lupus erythematosus which um, have been uh, recognized recently and then we will finish very briefly with erythema multiforme, Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis. Uh, I would like to show you the clinical differences if there are any and then I would like to talk about the triggers and whether or not drug reaction is the only uh, causality for these serious uh, conditions. So diseases of basement membrane zone uh, basement membrane is a tiny or tiny it's thin but it's very important structure that allows connection between the epidermis and dermis so it literally sticks the epidermis to our dermis and prevents it from sloughing by just simple rubbing on a molecular uh, aspect uh, this structure is pretty complex and is composed of several different proteins which start somewhere inside of the keratinocytes of the basal cell layer so the lowest layer of the epidermis and then there is a bunch of them interlinking uh, with each other and then the last one will literally hook it uh, over the collagen inside of the dermis and so many of these proteins uh, which are part of this basement membrane zone can then become target of different diseases and like in people we recognize several of them uh, and uh, these diseases will target different uh, proteins inside of the basement membrane so you can see mucous membrane pemphigoid uh, antibodies have been uncovered against collagen 17 but also for laminin 5 we have epidermolysis bullosa acquisita which is targeting collagen 7 and then there are some more rare conditions like bullos pemphigoid or junctional EBA which target uh, uh, you know collagen 17 or laminin 5 so definitely uh, plenty of proteins to become the target of uh, disease. You can imagine that anything which targets basement membrane will eventually lead to clinical presentation that can be pretty similar among the diseases. Vesicles which rapidly progress into erosions and ulcers and histologically epidermis is detaching from dermis. So definitely something which is very difficult or may be uh, very difficult to tell apart and what I would like to show you is some helpful uh, you know points uh, and approach that can help you to get uh, you know closer to the actual diagnosis and this is mostly because let me come back here although the research we have done uncovered these antibodies and their targets currently there is no commercially available test that could you know test for these antibodies for you as a clinician so we'll truly rely on limited although maybe not limited but just some uh, you know tools what we have and so this is just what I just said remember we don't have tests and even if we had the immunological test for the antibodies you saw that some of these diseases are targeting same protein so it's still not the only way how to diagnose them so what can we do what do we have as clinicians clinical assessment is key and because uh, you know over the last 20 years or maybe 30 we have been gathering uh, cases and we are now in process of, uh, in, of publishing this large case series which will give you some of the breed age lesion distribution 
informations, we can now use them and 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 help and to help us to come up with the potential or possible, most likely, uh, final diagnosis. So as a clinician, pay attention to breed and age of onset. There are some uh, specific spe specialties in uh, these conditions, and I will show them to you in a second. Look at the distribution of lesion. Ask your question, is this disease mucosal predominant versus hair skin predominant? And look at some of the chronicity and scarring. Not every disease from this uh, bag will lead to formation of scar. And then your pathologist can be also helpful. Again, it needs to be hand in hand with the clinical assessment. But we can look at the concurrent inflammation. Is it present? And if yes, what's its type? Neutrophilic versus eosinophilic. We can also use uh, collagen for immunohistochemistry, which is a very simple immunohistochemistry, which can be performed if the lab um, you know, orders the antibody. And then we can look at the dermal epidermal separation level. Where is this dermal epidermal separation in relationship to the collagen for uh, staining? And I will show it to you in a few slides. And then, uh, I am sorry to say, but we will have to play the odds, meaning we will have to take into account the prevalence of different uh, autoimmune subepidermal blistering diseases and make the judgment call what is the most likely final diagnosis. And when I am speaking about playing odds, here is the prevalence. And just uh, let me point out, this is all our database of autoimmune subepidermal blistering diseases which we gathered over you know, we Dr. Olibri and I just contributed towards the end uh, we he gathered over you know 20 30 years 20 sorry 20 years and you can see that these patients were received all over the world and we have only 77 patients. So these diseases are super rare, but from all these super rare diseases, you can be pretty sure that you will be at some point exposed to at least mucous membrane pemphigoid, which is the most common disease uh, from this group and potentially you may be lucky and see epidermolysis bullosa acquisita which is the second most common. The other diseases like bullos pemphigoid, acquired junctional EBA, those are pretty rare diseases which makes it easier for us uh, as clinicians to come up with the diagnosis by you know playing those odds. Of course we may make mistake because we are playing odds. But here is some of the things which are coming up from our case series and I just uh, submitted the epidermolysis bullosa acquisita and we are working on the mucos, on mucous membrane pemphigoid with my resident. So when you look at the breeds, German Shepherd, a third of these dogs uh, with mucous membrane pemphigoid were German Shepherds, so it appears that this breed is definitely more uh, sensitive versus epidermolysis bullosa acquisita, 55% of the patients in the case series were Grey Danes. So that is definitely not accidental. There is definitely breed predisposition for this particular dog. When you look at the age, mucous membrane pemphigoid is really not surprising us. Median age, five years, which is, you know, the average age for majority of, the, of autoimmune diseases. But the epidermolysis bullosa acquisita is uh, unique. Look at the median age, 1.2 years. That is extremely young age of onset and that can be very helpful if you are dealing with a blistering disease with the dog with a very young age of onset and some of the other clinical features which I will show you in a second will fit, you may be leaning towards this condition. And my computer just went berserk. Here is the lesion distribution of the most common autoimmune subepidermal blistering diseases. When you compare the two most common, mucous membrane pemphigoid and EBA, you can see that MMP is mostly mucosal or mucocutaneous. The lesions are almost exclusive.